Hello everybody, welcome back to the off-grid cabin. Happy 4th of July. We got quite a big project ahead of us this weekend. And it involves these. We're finally going to jack and level the cabin. I think I mentioned it in a previous video. Anyway, so I got some solid blocks for the base of the footings and some standard hollow cinder blocks. The cabin does have some sink to it. If you probably sight down there, you can see the ridge line has a little whoop de doo to it. Right in the area where the wood stove is, we think the weight of the wood stove definitely helped it sink a bit. Uh, there's also a broken beam in there. Also, uh, the, one of the problems I think that caused it to sink is that each one of the footings is just a single block in, in footprint. So even though you know, I got all those blocks, I don't need to jack the, pla the place way up high, but I'm going to double up all these footings. And you can, you can see how they've sunk. And this, this dirt is very soft. So I'm not surprised that it sank. So when we jack it up, I'm going to dig down to the more uh, sandy subsoil. Hopefully that will prevent it from, from sinking as quickly and easily. And also in the wood stove area, which is right about here, the chimney is, uh, yeah, see there's the chimney. So there's gonna be more weight here. We're also gonna put some water storage barrels in there, two 55 gallon drums most likely. That's gonna be, I forget, it's gonna be quite a bit of weight. So I'm gonna put some extra footings under here. I got a whole pile of jacks. I think there's uh, 14 or 15 there. There's a, a few hydraulic, most are mechanical. And you know, as you see, some of these are pretty long. They're gonna go under the, the porch end where there's some clearance. And some of them I might have to dig down a little bit to, to get clearance for the jack. Got some pre-cut chunks of uh, shitty, shitty wood just to, as a foot for the, for the jack so the jack doesn't sink in the ground. And then over there in the miscellaneous lumber pile, I have some uh, pressure treated uh, two buys and one buys for for shimming because of course you might not want four inches or eight inches you might need two inches or whatever so uh, I got some some shim stock as well okay so I raked out uh, the majority of the excess leaves and crap that's in there and I'll just kind of give you an idea of what's going on in here so there is the broken beam And I don't know if you can see, but these uh, two by tens or twelves or whatever they are, they're bowed from this beam here towards the camera. They're bowed down. The other thing I want to show you, an example right here. Can you tell why this footing has sunk in the ground? This block here is a standard cinder block, 8x8x16, eight by eight by with the two holes in the middle, and it's positioned vertically, so the holes go up and down. Now that's correct structurally, but it's incorrect for addressing the ground, because you have such a small surface area, it'll just send itself right into the ground. Now above here, above, above the 8x8 the eight eight block, there's a 4x8 cinder block, solid the one of these should have been on the ground and then and then this other one so that's another reason why it sank so much okay so what we're doing now is digging out from underneath the cabin and uh, leveling spots for the jacks so we got big piles of dirt here i am digging out kind of more than i need just so i have space to crawl around under there but you see what we're doing dig out flat spot, lay down a wide board, and this block here is just to adjust the height. Put a, a steel plate there if the top of the jack isn't wide enough. This one, as you see, I don't know, it's a specialty jack of some sort. So put a wide plate there so it doesn't dig into the wood. And we're doing that in all the spots that we want to jack. Also, we're keeping in mind 
uh, keeping the jack far enough away from the footing because I want to dig down, I don't know how far, but this topsoil, like I mentioned, is very soft. So I want to dig away this topsoil and hopefully get to a slightly more sturdy uh, clay layer or sand, silt, whatever. And so I'm, gonna have, of course, going to have to dig a hole there. And I don't want the jack too close to the hole because the load on that might collapse the hole in and cause a problem. So here I got oh, about a foot or so. I think, I think that'll be okay. Okay, so we finally got everything dug out as much as I can. And we got all the jacks in place that I have here. Got some blocks ready. And we're ready to go. So the first course of action is I'm going to jack up just a little bit where this broken beam is. Just enough to relieve um, those, those footings there. And I can take out that existing garbage and take the good new blocks there. Uh, level the ground, put them in place. I really don't want to raise this up too much because the middle of the floor is good. I don't want that to go up any higher. I want to really jack up the uh, perimeter, but I want some good solid support in the middle first. So I'm going to bring those blocks up just below, you know, whatever's convenient with what thickness shims and stuff I have, just below that beam. And then we can start evenly, a little bit at a time at each jack, jacking up the perimeter. All right, so it looks like a mess under there, but we are uh, getting somewhere. I got all the old footings out. They're all doubled up and stacked up new. And for the time being, I'm just putting random, you know, little bits of whatever I have laying around for the last few inches because this is still have to, this still has to get jacked up more but I just want something there just for safety so it's you know if something falls it's not going to fall far I still have to put something over there if I jack it up another half inch or so I can get another block under there but I still have to put uh, some blocks there and then now what we're doing now that the awful part the middle is not really done but in the process of getting done, we're jacking up the perimeter and taking out the uh, footings here. And you can see, again, just how deep those cinder blocks went in the ground because they weren't placed properly. So here's one little safety tip, especially if you're using a hydraulic jack. Like I've said, screw jacks are better, but you know what? It is pretty easy to pump a hydraulic jack. And also, I'll scrape the bottom of the barrel with how many jacks I could collect. When you're moving blocks in and out underneath where your footing is, try to hold and push the block like this. Don't push like that. Because if something happens, if that jack fails, I'll tell you what, you are not faster than the cabin falling. So keep that in mind. It's good with anything if you're jacking up a car or a piece of equipment or whatever if you're putting in some cribbing always hold it like that don't push like that with your fingers underneath it another thing i want to mention on these screw jacks well, a couple things uh i was having a bear of a time turning this one and uh, some others as well and what i had forgotten is that even though before i started using these i took them apart you know unscrewed them and greased the threads I neglected to grease this this foot here. So this that foot of course stays stationary and this part rotates with the screw. So there's a tremendous amount of friction there and that was really binding me up. So I took the jacks out and as you see I smeared grease in there and put it back in and that made it a lot easier to turn. The other thing is that if you look at the pitch on those threads, it's quite coarse. And the pitch on those threads is much finer. So all other things being equal, that jack is going to screw up a lot easier than the first one I showed you, just because of the, the pitch of the screw. So keep that in mind when you're either buying a jack or just selecting which one to put where out of your collection of jacks. Like, 
this right here, this is lifting a lot of weight and I was having trouble lifting it. So I swapped jacks out and I put this one in, in place and it, it, it was way, way easier. Well, everything's really coming into place here. We got pretty much all the footings redone. And under there, right there, I'm putting an extra footing right underneath where the wood stove is. So that combined with doubling up the footprint of all the others, that should really help everything from sinking excessively. And we're at the point now where we're jacking up the, the back side or that, that far corner, that far edge there. And that, like I mentioned before, had an issue where these joists themselves were bent just from years of, of uh, you know, sinking footings. So as we're jacking those jacks, the central footings there and over there, I'm starting to see daylight in between them, whereas before there wasn't any. So what we're going to have to do is just jack up the far edge there to about where we think they should be leave a little bit of daylight between these footings and the beam in the middle then just let time sink the middle back down onto those footings and it should level things out pretty well. Well everybody I'd say we're just about done. We're definitely beat. We worked all day yesterday and today and we also spent a previous what was it, one one other day? Two other days that we were? It was one day, really. One other day, just digging out underneath all the leaves and shit underneath the cabin and, and digging a sp space for me to crawl, you know, in that center beam there. There was a lot of prep work. No spiders, though. <laughs> no spiders, despite the uh, spider bite looking things on my arm. Uh, no snakes, that was nice. But anyway... So that was at least three solid days of work, and uh, we did it. Like I said, we doubled up all these footings and put flat blocks on the bottoms, shimmed everything. To kind of recap, oh, like I said before, uh, I left space on these central footings, uh, expecting them to or not the footings, but the floor to sink a bit because those joists are a bit bent. It is supported on that edge and the far edge. So I'm waiting for the middle to sink down a bit. Also, the right above this footing here, there's the back door and it, it's barely latching. It's not latching very well because the door frame is out of square now. So once that sinks, it should come right into square. And here's the other side. Oh, and uh, I also, just again recapping, the wood stove is right through the wall there. I put in another footing that was not there previously. There it is all set up. I put a piece of two inch oak bridging across two of the floor joists. So it's holding on something a little more substantial than, you know, a cinder block just on one board. And I, and I can't stress how important it is to have a variety of good lumber that's different thicknesses. Uh, I used all pressure treated stuff. This is probably one inch. That's some, this is just some crap that I got from Tractor Supply. They were using it to space out other stuff stacked on pallets, just, uh, you know, stickers basically. So I, I got some of that. That's kind of greenish, so it was pressure treated. And I also had some two by dimensional stuff. So uh, it was a good variety of thicknesses and the thicknesses kind of overlap, so you can, you can make different combinations and really dial in your height properly. And this is just the other side here. And one of the most satisfying things, I think, I, this is the very last footing that we did. And here's the front door. And you guys haven't had to open and close and fight with this door, but just opens and it just closes. 
it was binding up kind of up there somewhere and we tried planing it but that didn't really do much and I, I knew that it needed to be uh, the, the cabin needed to be leveled because everything was just all messed up and I'm wondering if some of these windows will open now because a lot of the windows didn't open before on the topic of jacks again this is definitely the wrong kind of jack to use for this kind of job but you see where it is there is not much clearance so it, it was pretty convenient for that purpose. I put, can't hardly see it, I, I did put a board underneath it, underneath the whole thing so it can kind of move a little bit if it wanted. And also I put that steel plate there so the foot of the jack can slide as, as, the, as that arm goes up. It only had to go up a little bit anyway. But not the right jack, but it, it did work and it was convenient. Otherwise I would, have, I would have had to dig a hole there for a taller jack. And it's late in the day and I'm tired and I really don't feel like digging another hole. So that's really it everybody. Oh, by the way, check out this cute little... I made a previous video of setting up the gas, propane gas system. And I just had the regulator mounted on the wall, outside wall here. It's kind of protected under the drip line. But I wanted a special little house for it, so I did that. And it's open on the bottom for, for ventilation. And uh, I have a little drip shield here, but, uh, you know, it's open there too. So gas, if there's a leak or something, it'll, it'll escape. But yeah, cute little, uh, little shelter I made for the regulator. It's not the right color. That's a Rust-Oleum red. But anyway, what a job. So the last thing we're going to do is just release all of these jacks. Every one of these has been shimmed properly so I'm just going to release all the jacks and that's that let it settle one thing we've noticed as we're walking around inside everything is rattling the stove and the pots and pans are rattling and the plates are rattling because everything is a lot more bouncy than it was before it hasn't all settled but uh, with the weight now on the footings everything will sink and find its happy spot we're gonna it's uh, September now we're gonna go through a winter and spring, a freeze and thaw, everything will, you know, nature will do its its, uh, its job and settle everything down. And I'm surprised by how perfect the floor is. I thought it would still be a lot wonkier um, than it is, and we'd have to just wait for everything to kind of settle. But really the only spot is, again, where those curved joists are. And now... A couple years from now, let's say there is, you know, something sinks a little bit or it settles weird and there's one low spot. Now we can use one or two or maybe just three jacks in one little area, jack it up and re-shim. And it'll be a much smaller job. And really it would just be a matter of finding the right dimensional lumber and stacking it up. Maybe exchanging a stack of lumber for a brick or, or a cinder block but it's going to be a lot easier going forward now, now that everything is properly done. So that's that, everybody. You know, we've never done this before. Obviously, I'm just, you know, mechanically inclined. I've, I've leveled things for other purposes, like when I was pouring Babbitt for my Patton brothers. I'm just familiar with a little bit here, a little bit there, and, and you, eventually, you eventually get it. So we'll unscrew these jacks, neaten up a little bit, and... Maybe use this dirt to fill some holes in the lawn. And uh, that's that. We had our supervisor here. She uh, she made sure everything was going right. Huh, Alice? That's it, everybody. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. And keep up to date with all our new videos by hitting the subscribe button there. Make sure to hit the like button because I'm sure you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and come on back for more.